recording is in progress. So I give the, the hand to our host today, uh, Magda, please. Thank you, Vlad. Hello and uh, welcome everybody uh, to our um, activity. Uh, this is the first uh, activity among several um, uh, ones, which includes uh, one workshop, one uh, experimental project, uh, and uh, a few exhibitions. And uh, we start uh, this activity with uh, uh, this uh, webinar today uh, as a part of a project named the Scholar Architect. Uh, it's it's a project um, uh, which uh, developed a few years ago uh, with uh, a lot of uh, activities, but uh, in 2022, uh, we, our goal is uh, to improve the quality of the teaching activity uh, regarding the design studio and uh, tutoring the architectural projects. So, uh, I shall present our guest speakers. We have uh, with us uh, uh, two very good friends of mine and uh, two special <laughs> persons. Uh, I present uh, first uh, Panayotis Antoniadis. Uh, his ecosystem facilitator are ETH Zurich and uh, chair of architecture and urban transformation program open public structures um, he has an interdisciplinary profile with background on the design and the implementation of distributed system uh, he has a phd on the economics and uh, peer to peer networks and a postdoc on uh, federation policies uh, and also it's a very good uh, friend of mine and a good person. We have a lot uh, um, to uh, teach about uh, this. The other guest is Ileana, uh, Ileana Apostol. Uh, Ileana is a researcher of uh, spatial production in the information age, a lecturer in urban so sociology, also at ETH Zurich and is co-founder uh, with uh, Panayotis of Zurich-based NetHood Association. They will uh, speak probably about uh, these activities in the, their presentation. Uh, the other team is uh, from uh, Minku University and um, we, uh, I don't present myself, uh, I'm uh, the colleague uh, with uh, uh, the following uh, partners at uh, one design studio and uh, all of us we uh, have uh, um, the goal to uh, challenge the the limits of this activity uh, at design studio we propose to have uh, each year something new something on uh, uh, trends and uh, i shall start to present uh, my team uh, it's um, Vlad Eftenie, the first one, um, uh, lecturer at uh, our university. Also Dragos Popescu, uh, my I second <laughs> uh, assistant, is also lecturer at uh, our university. And uh, from this year, uh, we uh, increase our team with uh, the PH researcher Alexandru Brătescu. Uh, all of us, uh, we propose to share with you uh, the, our activity and the experience uh, uh, on design uh, studio. So the main purpose is uh, to exchange information about teaching methods and uh, also about the results. The illustration will complete the analysis and at the end of the session we'll convert to a few conclusions and we um, want uh, you to participate at this uh, discussion at the end. Uh, I think this is the best way to, to reach some uh, conclusion in this uh, 
uh, field. So I don't uh, speak uh, very much because uh, I'm also very interested to to hear and see uh, the the materials <laughs> which will be presented. Uh, so I uh, give the uh, the first uh, speaker, uh, uh, Panayotis. I invite you to <laughs> to share with us to share with us your uh, knowledge, your experience. Yes, yeah, so I'm Panayotis or Panos. Uh, I'm now here at the what we call the Design in Dialogue Lab. It's uh, behind me. I will show a little bit more before. You see, this is a carpet that the students have transformed to a mock-up to show to different guests their projects. There is a, a technical ceiling for performances, a very interesting uh, design of a curtain through carpets uh, from the French army. Uh, we call it design in dialogue because one of the key ideas of this chair, the chair of urban transformation, uh, is to uh, design processes. So. A, a challenge that uh, our professor has put is uh, a question that he, he poses to, to the architecture field is whether architects should uh, start dreaming of building less. So it's, a, it's a, an approach of architecture that uh, focuses less on design and building things and more on processes and interdisciplinarity and how to create space uh, not just by intervening with uh, physical interventions, but also through uh, human and uh, other type of processes. And actually, this is the reason I am in this uh, lab, which is a sign of its uh, high openness and interdisciplinarity, because I'm not at all an architect. Ileana can certify that I cannot even draw a straight line. Uh, but I have been involved in many projects that actually create space. With Ileana, we have found it a collective space in the center of Zurich, which we call uh, L200 through Nethood. And this is how I met actually uh, my team here at the ETH because they use this space to uh, uh, create some sort of contacts with the Greek community of architects before a studio they would do in Greece. And actually it was through the methodologies that use this space that uh, uh, the chair was interested in my skills actually. And um, one of my first activities in the chair was to be part of a studio, which was called the Sensing Space. And uh, the idea I will explain was to approach uh, space uh, through a very, let's say, introvert way. I mean, not start doing things in the space, but first try to understand it, to sense it. And we engage the students in a process of uh, uh, sorry, there is a little noise. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, uh, yes, okay, sorry. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, yes, the idea is actually to listen. And uh, this is interesting because uh, here in the building there are many noises around. And uh, I will uh, uh, go step by step on how this studio was designed and uh, implemented. And I will comment on some methodological aspects about it. Uh, perhaps I could start from the end. The end of the studio was a premiere. So instead of having a creep, the students were uh, asked to perform like in a theater and they produced this um, small booklet, which was actually like the program of a theater. And uh, it had uh, the contents, uh, wait, I, don't, I have not done this before. Uh, so the contents was uh, actually the acts of a play. And uh, every student would have its own part of this performance uh, that was supposed to have some sort of continuity. And the idea was not to present uh, what the students did, but to create an experience based on what they did. And it was not so easy. I mean, there was a lot of uh, resistance from the students that were always wanted to present how much work they did. But actually, we didn't ask for this. We asked them to just create an experience out of it and the studio was uh, structured in uh, four phases i don't know if you see so the idea was to have an, uh, a very slow and progressive process uh, we call it the first phase swarm where we uh, bring all the resources and all of the energies of the students together without uh, any objective 
uh, and then it's about sensing and listening and then about settling towards the end and then uh, the performance. And this was another attribute of this studio that we didn't ask the students to define very fast what they did. We asked them to take the time for long compared to what they have used to, uh, to understand what they really want to do. And to understand what they really want to do, we engage them in a process to sense the environment through the bodies. So the first thing we did was to listen. So we, uh, do, we were doing a listening exercise. This is one photo of, of one of these sessions. So every morning before anything, we were uh, gathering into a space in the neighborhood around and we were listening this space and we were start, starting with a phrase that was saying, uh, listen to everything until it all belongs together and you are part of it. And then completely quiet, but not in a very spiritual way, we were trying to listen as much as possible to the space where we have been. So the idea was to start from our environment, understand it, and then slowly start working with it. Uh, so this was the very, very first activity that we were doing since the first day. And then instead of, um, I don't know, uh, collecting uh, material, doing interviews, we invited an artist from uh, the Netherlands and uh, organized for the students a collective dance in the streets of the neighborhood. So all the students, it was Corona time with the right distance. Uh, we went out in the streets and they start dancing and exploring space actually through dance. For me, it was very interesting because I went to some parts of the neighborhood that I never noticed before, but doing it as a group, it was creating a different understanding of the environment. And we did a lot of things, uh, other different theater, games, etc., without saying what people should do. And actually for me, it was very interesting how the students were reacting to it. They wanted to do something. They start stress. The time was passing and they didn't have a project. And we tell them, don't worry. <laughs> Concentrate a little on yourself, on the environment. You will find something to do. It's not the most important thing to start drawing. I mean, they were really nervous that they didn't touch a pen and, you know, to start drawing lines. And uh, what was interesting with these exercises is that the students actually start creating the sense of the group and they start depending on each other. It was not some sort of an individual project that it should do, but they started the, literally seeing their group as a, uh, as a team and not as a, a separate groups. And um, we saw the studio, what I saw here, also through its uh, design as a stage and not as a laboratory. So whatever people were doing, they were asking to perform it in a way. And uh, then the crits arrive. And uh, we don't, uh, this, the word crit is a forbidden work, a word in our studio. We never say crits. Who says crits? It's like saying a bad word. Because crit is about criticism, about, you know, there is this tradition, especially at ETH, that uh, people cry with the, <laughs> before they start the crits about what it will happen to them. There are some very strict professors that they put you down, they criticize you. So in our case, it's not a crit, it's a design in dialogue session where the idea is uh, actually to uh, challenge the students to manage to get good feedback for their work. So it's like an exercise, the crit itself, that we invite students to do their best, to, pro to provoke the best possible feedback to improve what they do and this is given to them this is something they should design they should find questions to ask to the guests they should present their work in a way that the feedback is productive and this is where we focus and not on somehow challenging their capacity or their inventiveness and uh, yes i think it worked uh, in a way we try to uh, uh, give them this idea that actually uh, the process is the message, how we say the media, the medium is the... So the process itself, it's so important that it's something we should learn and it's something you should trust actually. 
Because what we realized the students didn't know was exactly to trust the process and not groups until, I don't know, 10 days before the final performance that they still didn't know what they will do. But they did it, it worked. I mean, they went, three of them in a, a hut in the Alps, they closed themselves 10 days and they somehow processed all these experiences that they had and they came up with a very nice movie, for example, in this case. Um, so I could give two examples of projects to show exactly how people can do very interesting architectural work without designing. And one of them is the empty space. I can search for it here. So we have in this uh, place where I am now, when our studio started, by some sort of uh, administrative mistake, there was a space here, uh, sorry, this one, that it was in the middle of a long corridor that was left empty. And no chair had uh, uh, something, you know, and it was very small. So we thought, let's not do anything about this space and keep it like this. So the students liked the idea and they did as their semester project was to keep the space empty. This was their project. They had to defend the emptiness of the space and allow access to it only temporarily. So many things were happening there, but whatever was happening, people then should uh, remove it and should keep it as it was before. And uh, it was very impressive how many things they learned and how difficult it was actually to keep the space empty. I mean, imagine to have 100 architects and an empty space. It's like uh, <laughs> you, you cannot stop them from doing things there and uh, appropriating it and imagining, ah, we should do this, we should do that. And then at the end, uh, they just do a very beautiful performance uh, provoking different inter interpretations of what means emptiness. Because emptiness has also many dimensions, temporal, historical, they created a podcast where they allow, uh, encouraged everybody to go to small parts of this space and hear speculative histories of how this dot was made to understand that space has also some sort of history. For me, it was very interesting because they didn't design absolutely anything, but actually we learned a lot from their work. Another project was called the uh, ONA After Hours. ONA is our building here. And the students were very attached to the idea of uh, the maintenance. They, 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 they thought how important is maintenance and they got very uh, attached to the cleaning personnel because we were doing performances here in our studio and we were searching for the cleaners to clean it. And to, to find them, you should come at five o'clock in the morning because this is when they were cleaning the space. So actually they realized how hidden is all this work because the students come at nine o'clock and they start doing a series of interventions to reveal the presence of the cleaners, but also how our actions during the day affect their work. So how the students leave everything on top of each other and then the cleaners have to take out the cables to clean below. And they start creating rituals for putting the chairs on top of the tables to create space for the cleaners, organize the a painting exhibition of one of the cleaners actually who was from Romania and she was a painter <laughs> and she had her private painting collection and they created an exhibition for them. They actually exhibited in a gallery, not gallery, in an art space in Zurich and all their work was about revelation and at the end of the finals instead of telling us all the things they did they created a small theater piece where every one of us had a role and the role was a cleaning role. So at the end of the studio, they presented their work was actually a collective cleaning of the space that everybody took their own role. And this was their crits actually, just a performance of how important it is of all of us to help them in the maintenance. And yes, I don't know. <laughs> this, is, uh, uh, this is what I had in mind to, to tell you. I could make a small pause uh, to drink you, a little water. You would like to present us the space, maybe? Uh, yes, I mean, I can start moving. I don't know. So wait, just a second to... 
what I didn't say is that uh, all this was part also of an idea to open up um, our uh, lab here. I mean, if I go out, this is a very interesting setting because um, we are part of the ETH who has a big campus, but actually our lab is in a neighborhood. In a, it's, a, it's a building uh, at the outskirts of um, uh, Zurich. And uh, now uh, the students of this year, they are uh, designing some furniture. And the idea is to make this space more public. So we have the idea, it's the, the project is called opening up or not to open up the space actually to the neighborhood. And our own studio was actually part of this process. Uh, you see this, uh, this is the entrance of our lab. One of the discussions we have is maybe we should brand it less to make it more, um, inclusive and more welcoming to, to people from the outside because when people hear the word lab, it's a little intimidating. And this is our space, which was designed as a multifunctional space uh, that it's uh, where the uh, students present their work. Um, but also we want to see it as a public space of the neighborhood. This is now from the current project and they call this a room of entanglements and the students study how a room where city officials would be invited to discuss about the project, how such a room should look. A table might not be enough. So they try to create what they call scenographies, where they invite guests into this room and they walk them through the model, which is a carpet. They let them sit down and play with a different, uh, you know better, I don't know how you call them, these mock-ups. And uh, yes, I don't know, now more of a tourist guide. Uh, can I, so can I think maybe, maybe to show also the stage, uh, the, the structure above the, the carpet? Yeah, uh, this is uh, just an infrastructure for lighting. I mean, it creates both the means, but also the feeling that you are in a space of performance. So people are somehow tuned into this attitude to uh, show their work more in a performative way than in a technical, let's say, rational way. And they have this as their stage. And just next door, when I go now, is their working space, which does not look so cool. It's, they have created here some intimate spaces. What did you say? Cotets. And it's a mess. You know how architecture students are. Uh, this is a long corridor. It's a, a, that ETH rents. And this is what I showed you as the empty space that in this semester it's transformed to a sort of lounge, living room with a coffee machine, etc. I understood that coffee is very important here. It's one of the most important resources that students praise when they talk about infrastructure. Ah, and this is a, a self that the cleaning lady group did last year to have some cleaning material for people to clean but now it's empty. I mean, in the beginning it was full, now slowly, slowly, the new generation didn't follow up on their uh, call for collective cleanliness of the space. Uh, yes, I don't know. This is a kitchen. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the uh, very important um, principles here in our lab is that uh, students should uh, cook and we, uh, in every studio, actually, the students themselves cook and they share the cost of the food and they see the creation of food as actually as a collective process and not some sort of task that somebody has to do. One of our studio projects was a choreography of food, how you can create collective uh, food situations where the cooking is part of the process, it's not on the side, but the people that cook are actually um, part of the group. With Ileana, we were in a workshop of this chair where uh, people were giving vegetables to cut them in tables with paper. And while they were cutting, they were also working. And then after they were cutting all the vegetables, they would eat them, they, they would be cooked. And it was some sort of the collective creation of this uh, meal. Yeah, I don't know. I think I talked a lot, no?
You have yeah, any good. questions? Help me a little. I don't know. <laughs> what Maybe could I be could continue. Maybe I can continue with the study that I want to present. And um, uh, if there are questions for Panayotis, of course, please. Uh, uh, maybe now it's time to, he, he will have to leave in half an hour, so maybe, yes, maybe it's time for questions now. For questions now. And then I will continue with the uh, urban study that uh, we did uh, for the students. In Actually, I don't have a question, but I have a, a good word, uh, because uh, Panayotis, your speech reminded me that uh, some complementary experiences are uh, necessary in order to become an architect or a researcher. And uh, I remember uh, visiting uh, the University of Montpellier. I uh, found there some architecture students dancing in a dancing class in the main hall. And I asked the teacher, whoa, what are you doing here? It's free time? No, it's a time when we come uh, conscious about our bodies and of the space movement. Whoa, I said, I imagine architectural students in Yon Minku dancing in the hall and uh, some uh, teachers uh, coming in and asking, whoa, what is this? Actually, I embrace the methods that you presented uh, because architecture is life and becoming an, an architect, it's knowing about the life and uh, becoming yourself and uh, coming into your senses. So I think it's very interesting and I hope someday we could implement Magda, some of these uh, intentions at least, other than drawing uh, plans and sections and facades. But all the uh, architects from your university, I know, uh, I know they dance a lot. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe In their they free dance. time. <laughs> They dance too much and then they don't care in their, uh, pro in their practice to, to continue. So maybe, maybe uh, because we talk about dance, I will move directly to, the, to urban choreography. <laughs> so um, uh, I, am, um, at, uh, I, I work also at uh, the Department of Architecture, but uh, with the Chair of Urban Sociology, which is uh, very close to urbanism, what we, we know from Minku. And, um, I will uh, talk about uh, um, a course that we have. Uh, we don't have studios from, uh, from the chair of uh, sociology, but uh, uh, in uh, one semester in, in uh, the fall, we teach a, a course on research, urban research methods, uh, which is more for master students, but also, uh, of course, uh, students could have access to, to it if there is a space. Uh, to understand that the size of it is about 200 and or plus students and we work in teams of two and um, uh, the, the whole uh, the semester is uh, divided into uh, parts one is a, an ethnographic uh, sociological uh, urban study of, uh, of a neighborhood we did in the last two years uh, with the pandemic we thought that uh, people might um, want to focus on their own neighborhoods and uh, then the second uh, part of this course, they uh, created these uh, teams of two students, an urban intervention. So it's not really a, a design project. It's a very small uh, element, an urban intervention, but it, that it's drawn from this uh, uh, sociological study. And uh, I, I have a few examples and I will, uh, I will show you, but I want to explain briefly before for what that means. Uh, because uh, they are uh, asked, the students are asked first to, to um, figure out where they want to go, then they go and visit the space, they walk, uh, they, they do this uh, um, observation with a camera uh, that is individual, and then based on these observations of the space, they choose places where they will do participant observation, uh, noting what happens there with details, with hours, so it's a, some sort of a relativization of the, the experience. And then uh, uh, they take also interviews and the, these interviews with the citizens uh, are, um, or uh, users of the space are um, uh, in two, uh, they, they are together. 
and it's a it's a breakthrough in in uh, interacting with uh, with uh, real residents, understanding the needs that. And uh, I think that I I mean I will focus. That's why I chose to talk about this experience because. Uh, the students are many times surprised that uh, they have an idea of what the problems are or what they would like to, to have as an intervention, but many times the interviews are opening up a whole uh, world of uh, what it's possible and what it's really needed. And uh, yes, and uh, the, the, so they, they document all, all these experiences in the city. And then they have to produce what it's called an, an uh, urban profile. At the beginning, we showed that uh, book. It is a study of a team of from the from the Department of Architecture at uh, ETH, including uh, but, so architects, uh, uh, landscape architects, and uh, uh, the team of so, from sociology, from us, from urbanism, and um, it was a way of understanding what means uh, uh, space of quality and there were defined six main urban qualities uh, with uh, sub qualities uh, of uh, I mean each urban quality let's say was divided with uh, with three uh, others and this uh, uh, this uh, so this is the study it's in German yeah, we are not sharing it no? not sure. uh, we will um, <clears throat> we will show you probably I will show at the end all the all the images to uh, to make it simpler for uh, for screen sharing, but uh, uh, yes, so these qualities, the, the students analyze the, the space, they try to analyze, the, the, they try to understand the, their urban environment, and then they should calibrate uh, these qualities against either they choose two, two different locations that they, they uh, uh, study and they calibrate these uh, profiles against each other, or their um, place of study will be calibrated against uh, a location that is, has uh, taken the proof of time or it has some sort of uh, uh, larger recognition. You know, we would maybe talk about a central uh, location like, uh, I don't know, at, uh, Vlad takes many photographs at uh, Ateneum, you know, and that would be a, a, a location that could provide this kind of uh, information for other uh, location to be analyzed uh, in uh, in comparison, and um, the, uh, as assignment, they have to produce this uh, this. Uh, so this is the the uh, uh, cover of the uh, study. Now that we are uh, here, I will go quickly to to show. Okay, there is a description of the the quality. I, I don't think I will go into the. Uh, details of what they are, but uh, they could be so. For example, central uh, the, the the six uh, urban qualities are centrality, diversity, interaction, uh, uh, accessibility, uh, adaptability, and uh, appropriation, and then they could be uh, analyzed uh, against. Uh, so there are like some sort of uh, absolute uh, quality of this uh, quality or uh, relational or symbolic. Uh, uh, in, uh, for example, in interaction, it's also about uh, social. I mean, one element that is taken into account is social density, or intensity of the interaction, or duration of interaction. When we talk about accessibility, it's about porosity, regulation, or contextuality. So there are different ways of looking at these different qualities, but they could be uh, uh, noted or documented in a tabular form. Or there is another uh, way in a, in a diagram, and this is what the students were here. It's a, it's a diagram, an example of different locations in which there is a scale uh, through which uh, we can uh, uh, create this urban profile according to these qualities. So the students were asked to, to produce this dossier for, for the location uh, in their neighborhood that they chose. And um, also to deliver uh, one page of synthesis, uh, which is always a little difficult when we do this kind of extensive studies with very little time. This is also, it's, they have two weeks maximum, something like that, but on top of all the studios and everything else that they have to do. And um, uh, they have to make a synthesis in which to, they will uh, highlight two main uh, qualities of uh, that location. 
and then in their urban intervention will be related to those qualities. And uh, we ask uh, somehow implicitly that uh, the, because it is sociology that the interviews and the interaction with the, with the public should be taken into account. Uh, and then they, they reason, they explain their urban intervention according to different uh, uh, knowledge that they had from the interview. So they connect these uh, quotations with, uh, with what, uh, what they do in the, um, in the small urban intervention. So this is briefly the, the exercise. And uh, I could uh, show, uh, so besides this uh, theoretical uh, study, if I manage to open yes i i chose a, a project that it is uh, uh, of a team of uh, two students and one of them is of romanian origin it was my only student in 2000, 205 students that uh, is called olga Akobuschan. and this is the uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I can zoom, or okay, I, I will not zoom because it's uh, okay. They explain here what they do. This is the, the this kind of diagram that explains the, the quality of uh, a neighborhood uh, uh, that was, uh, let's say, a, a village or a, a location in itself, uh, a settlement in itself uh, in the immediate proximity of Zurich, but now it's one of the main neighborhoods. Uh, many artists live there, and it's very um, uh, densely and intensely lived, and it has also a very high uh, um, diversity, also ethnic diversity. Many many ethnic groups live there. Uh, the, in in Switzerland, in general, all the localities are connected with railways. And uh, here at the uh, bottom uh, left, uh, it's an image of the train station that it's been developed, and uh, it has for years and years a construction site. And uh, the students, out of all the studies and the discussions with the neighbors, um, they they chose the uh, as uh, main qualities uh, appropriation and interaction. And uh, they proposed on the scaffolding of this construction site to have elements that could be uh, used by the, by the residents. And uh, here uh, below the, the diagram, they, uh, they chose uh, like a typology of elements that could be connected with the scaffolding. So some clothing that could be used for shade or for rain or to make hammocks or to uh, be used uh, somehow on these uh, wooden structures. Uh, that are uh, at, uh, adjacent to, to the scaffolding of the construction site. Uh, lighting and some wooden boards that also could be used for people to sit and so on. And here, uh, if, you, if you see in the image, they, uh, uh, they uh, create some sort of interaction with the construction site. So visibility, but also spaces to sit or to uh, go higher, uh, to, to observe, to have a different perspective over the city. And uh, they were even arguing that this could bring uh, safety because uh, it is, uh, it will be uh, with light, it will be used also uh, during the hours when, uh, when the construction site is closed. Uh, it is a little bit of a utopian <laughs> because the rules, we know that the safety rules uh, might not allow this kind of uh, uh, mixing of, uh, of uh, construction site with uh, public space. But uh, we uh, we appreciated uh, this uh, this project uh, uh, for uh, for the for the flexibility and the, the way the, the students uh, approach the uh, the intervention in the city. Uh, now uh, to go back <laughs> to go back to the documents. Uh, yes. <laughs> I am on the laptop of Magda, and it's always a challenge to change the laptop. <laughs> um, and here another a second uh, project um, was um, also in a, it's a, it's a central neighborhood in uh, in Zurich. Um, with uh, again, it's a, a space that uh, I mean the, the spaces are uh, public spaces are very animated. It's a, a very lively neighborhood, 
but it is divided with uh, what uh, here on the upper right corner we might see. It's like a highway with uh, noise and uh, a lot of traffic also late at night. And uh, it's one of the main arteries in the city. And uh, they knew that the existence of, of this uh, uh, how shall I put uh, annoying presence in uh, in the neighborhood, but from the interviews, actually, they understood that it's a big uh, big issue this noise. So what the students, this group proposed, were three locations of uh, a noise uh, buffers, noise uh, uh, walls, but that will have also uh, different uses. And uh, one uh, one of these walls uh, was uh, is proposed as a greenhouse with plants. Another one uh, is uh, a shelf where people can share different objects that they, they want to share, they don't need or so. And another uh, 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 such a noise wall uh, was a bistro that with different layers and uh, that uh, it's, a, it's a wider space. And so this is the type of, of urban interventions that they produce in this very few weeks. And uh, uh, at the end of the, the course that has lectures, and uh, one, uh, one lecture is dedicated to discussions about the, the study of uh, the urban study, and another lecture is dedicated to, or actually two for this uh, urban intervention, but uh, everything is very, very compact and it's a very intense study, but they, they appreciate very much. I mean, it is a, it's a, a first, uh, let's say, hint to into what could be urban uh, analysis. Uh, myself, because I like very much getting feedback from students and also from uh, student graduates, uh, I learned how frustrating it is then to work as architects in, a, in a, um, architecture firms and not to have the time to do this kind of studies that they learn <laughs> in school. But at least they, they have a good standard and they understand the, the spaces with which they work as designers. Thanks, this is my intervention. Thank you, Ilana. And uh, again, thank you, Panayotis. Uh, I understand uh, uh, if you need uh, to leave us for another meeting, it's uh, not a problem. And now uh, I uh, salute uh, Vlad to present uh, something for us. I don't know. I think what. it's Alex turn. Alex is the first? Okay. Alex. Yes. <laughs> Alex, Alexandru Bratescu, our younger colleague. Yes. Normally, I, I I would be the first in in for every speech, but it's the turn okay. of okay. Alex to, to. We shall present three kinds of uh, yes. projects, and uh, Alex, uh, the first one, uh, will uh, share with us. Uh, and I don't say more. Okay. Um, for today, I would uh, like to present you some. Um, some projects made by uh, fifth year students during the sketch exam, which uh, is a uh, one day exam uh, in uh, which students are uh, challenged to respond uh, creatively and to um, operate with all the knowledge um, acquired uh, in the architecture studio. So uh, during this uh, semester uh, framework, uh, special structures, students were uh, asked to develop an uh, object as a signal access point and to organize a salt mine uh, in, um, uh, in a park in uh, Bucharest in the military neighborhood. So uh, the salt mine will be built in, uh, inside the luxury passage, which is currently unused and uh, in a state of uh, degradation. And uh, it's about uh, a, a section with 80 meters long and with variable height from uh, seven meters to five uh, meters. And uh, it is desired to make an access device for a special structure that will play a landmark role in the park and to create two therapy rooms designed entirely of uh, salt blocks and uh, they must be adapted to all the segments of the of the community so uh, the um, the cover structure will uh, will protect the access uh, area to the salt mine and uh, the, uh, the structural solution and the materials uh, chosen for arrangement We'll take into account that 
the salt Your home, hello. My... Hello. Yes, we are in touch. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, my internet connection is, in, is uh, unstable for the moment. Uh, I will continue. So uh, using all the, the knowledge acquired uh, during the previous years of study, the proposal will, uh, will follow the uh, integration on the site, the aesthetics of the structural and uh, architectural plastics, and the efficient configuration and accessibility, and uh, also the sustainability. This, uh, these terms will be the main guidelines for, uh, uh, for this uh, team. And I will uh, start with the projects. The first uh, project is uh, focused on the access area of the passage uh, and on the gradual passage to the interior of the building. So the coverage, uh, the coverage anticipates the user experience being inspired by uh, the stone of, uh, of salts, the stalactite. And uh, in this case, to the metal structure and uh, through the translucent panels, the student relies on, uh, on the natural light uh, uh, and uh, on its reflection on the salt walls, which creates uh, special visual effects right in this, uh, in this area of access. Uh, inside the salt mine, we can see there are two treatment rooms uh, being separated by moving movable walls. Uh, relying on the um, flexibility of, uh, of space, depending on the future needs of the building and uh, the community. The next project is uh, focused uh, on the landmark idea on the park by creating a metal structure in the form of a multifunctional cube located on the top of the passage right here and uh, this structure includes uh, the access point to the salt mine an exhibition space and the belvedere point on the top of the building um, the whole structure is uh, covered in, uh, in, into a transparent mesh so at night uh, by its simple present and uh, by the game of light and shadow the architectural objects become uh, becomes uh, Activating uh, pool and uh, gathering space for uh, for the community. Uh, on the underground floor, we can see that the square team is uh, is maintained. All the therapy rooms are designed as uh, individual sculptural objects with uh, various functions. Okay, uh, the following proposal. Uh, Distinct a simple, uh, simple volume in the form of, uh, of a pre made of uh, wooden structural elements that create that uh, enters uh, in a relation with, uh, with the park using the wood as the main uh, the material. The uh, access style is uh, marked by increasing the volume and by extracting some uh, spherical gaps. Uh, that marks some uh, certain stages of the route, the route inside the building. Uh, on the interior, the student relied on uh, artificial light uh, in an architectural manner with uh, a rating role and on the principles of uh, free plane, relying uh, on the flexibility of space. The therapy areas are uh, delimited by uh, massive furniture made of salt blocks that creates this uh, tectonic, uh, tectonic image for the, for the salt mine. Uh, this propo this uh, proposal stands out by uh, the, difference, uh, the difference in height in section by uh, creating platforms at uh, mid levels and uh, by introducing the vegetation inside the building. So, uh, 
the, um, the relation between the, the park and the building is maintained in a, in a very subtle way. Uh, also, the um, idea of uh, vegetation and uh, the within the architecture object is uh, obtained by uh, making uh, the access point uh, who stands out through, through cover, a cover covered in vege uh, vegetation. So the access becomes one with the natural environment. And uh, the last uh, project stands out by, uh, by creating a special structure starting from a basic three-dimensional uh, module that through repetition creates uh, complex structures with that itself become, um, becomes one, uh, one with the building. The team, uh, the team of the module is uh, kept uh, in the interior uh, concept, uh, starting from uh, modules uh, of uh, salt blocks of different sizes and types. It is possible to create sitting areas uh, from the simplest form of a bench and to the composition of several modules, we can achieve uh, some degrees areas. And uh, for all these projects, uh, I try to present in a, in a general terms, a way of uh, approaching the problem, uh, logical uh, reasoning based on the concepts of volumetric and uh, planimetric composition, the relationship between uh, architecture object and the environment, and uh, mostly important, I think, the idea of, uh, of searching, of uh, looking uh, for the shape in relation to the function. And I think I will uh, invite uh, Vlad. Thank, thank you, Alexandru. Yes, uh, the next uh, speaker is uh, Dragos or Vlad? <laughs> Actually, it's, it's Dragos, but I would Dragos. like to, to make a point on uh, Alexandru's presentation that it's a project uh, in a real site with a real uh, demandings, economic demandings, social demandings, and it's part of a relationship that we started with uh, the authorities, with the mayor of the sixth sector, uh, or how we could put it, the sixth uh, district. district. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And uh, we made a presentation of these works also to the committee of the mayor. And they're very interested into gathering ideas and into putting together ideas and into um, giving the students also a real feedback uh, because this connection, we try to reinforce the connection between the ideas, the university place, and the political, as I say, uh, the decision space. And the students are always extremely happy to get into this real connection, because usually we stay in the design room, uh, studio and we talk together and we imagine worlds, but not having a real contact with the world. So by these projects, we try to bring the students uh, closer to the real world and to make a point by giving them real situations with real problems in order to gain uh, real solutions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vlad. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Uh... <laughs> I'm having some problems with the internet, uh, but maybe I, I will switch off my camera because uh, I also have a presentation to make. Um, so I'll be talking about uh, the large project that we, we have um, each semester for the second semester um, of the last year, the fifth year of study. It was a nine week uh, project. 
And the theme of the um, project was um, of the semester is uh, what's the conversion in a broader sense of the. Um, and let me start sharing. Okay. So. <clears throat> So the theme of the semester was conversion, extension, rehabilitation in a sustainable uh, way. And uh, the project what we, what, uh, that we chose was um, the extension of the Museum of Technology. Um, the site was a very beautiful um, uh, old uh, uh, power plant in uh, the Filaret uh, area um, <clears throat> of Bucharest located uh, to um, uh, Carol Park. Um, <clears throat> so, this is the site. This is the, the existing Museum of Technology, which is a rather dull, uh, dull building and um, not uh, very appropriate for uh, for uh, the current uh, uh, need for uh, for such uh, events in the twenty first century. Uh, what we we thought so was to to expand it to extend to make the extension to to the um, uh, to another uh, building that is very beautiful just across the street, which is this uh, uh, old electric power station built at the uh, beginning of the 20th century. And uh, <clears throat> what we all um, usually do at the, our um, studio uh, or, or of architectural design is to to expand a little bit our research so um, <clears throat> because it's all, always considered that it's important for the students to have a broader view of their projects and to think of an urban scale first so what the situation here was that um, the, the space around the the monument was uh, is a um, also an industrial site that has no uh, uh, real value. That there are some uh, buildings uh, that were built late, uh, later in the 20th century, some old warehouses with no architectural value, occupying a large part of the island adjacent to, to the park. So for the first May phase, uh, we had that this uh, urban analysis and the strategy for the intervention and um, the main objectives were to decode the existing cultural, historical, technological context proposed by the team. And have uh, for the students to have a critical attitude on the conclusions of the site uh, and context analysis. And then to, to try to implement um, an intervention strategy through conversion by developing the theme program and developing a formal spatial concept and detailing it. Um, <clears throat> in order to do that, uh, the students uh, were split into teams of four persons and uh, we conducted the urban analysis of the island. Here you have some. Um, uh, photos that will, were made for their uh, photo documentation of the sites and <clears throat> also of the surroundings. The, this, uh, the immediate surroundings and uh, later the and, and also the, the larger uh, area, uh, which is very um, uh, beautiful because uh, you have very uh, good scene scenes and uh, uh, aerial views from the top of the uh, of the park. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the diagnosis. These are some uh, instances from the uh, from the, uh, the park instances. In parallel, the students studied uh, some similar uh, examples of conversions and uh, interventions in the industrial tissue and uh, synthesize the information gathered from the sites and trying to understand uh, as mentioned before the, the 
in the site. <clears throat> so this is uh, what was uh, produced for, for the first uh, uh, phase. Um, this study allowed for um, urban proposals for each team. And um, they sketched this approach for um, uh, the, the entire area. Um, <clears throat> and the concept of the museum tour, which was uh, one of the key elements being uh, the decision to, to over the profile of the street that is uh, between the old museum and the, the, the power plant whether it would be a pedestrian street or a partial pedestrian street, uh, et cetera. So these are some of, the, of their projects for the first phase, first phase. They also made the proposals for the, the street grid, uh, which is, was to be completed within the, the uh, urban island because now you, there's no, practically there's no uh, streets to, uh, to have um, access to. Here's some, the team of, uh, uh, the project for, of another team. And for the second phase, uh, they continue at the, the design of the master plan and uh, the architectural detailing. So uh, the students continue their work in teams of uh, two persons, and uh, they made slight uh, slight adjustments to the to their uh, master plan. In parallel, they um, they continued uh, the study cases, uh, which were more applied to. Um, with this uh, particular function, which was the Museum of Technology. And also um, this, this meant that they would start thinking of um, different areas to accommodate all types of users from the youngest to the elderly ones. And uh, the main uh, objectives, objectives for this uh, second phase were to create a coherent uh, and functional urban proposal for the area, subject of the study, which was the urban island of the museum, the relation with the adjacent park across the street, possible connections to the, um, with, with other existing uh, valuable uh, sites, uh, potential cultural hubs, hubs, which was uh, one of it uh, was uh, right here, just across the park in this, in this project. <coughs> Uh, another objective was to create an integrated concept for the extension of the museum, consisting in the conversion of the existing valuable buildings and design of new buildings, extensions that uh, would complete the uh, museum circuit. Because uh, <clears throat> this was uh, an important issue, what, what to preserve uh, and what uh, not to be preserved. And uh, not, last but not least, at least uh, have an approach that would uh, prove the understanding and use of sustainable elements uh, and their integration in the project. Uh, by definition, preserving uh, an existing building is already a sustainable approach, but uh, they will also address other elements related to sustainability, uh, mainly related to the relationship of the buildings to the environment, building and materials, uh, in space, uh, and so on. So uh, the solutions were quite different and uh, we were happy that the students had so many interesting ideas. Um, for instance, this one is create, was creating um, uh, plaza, an underground plaza uh, under the uh, central uh, focus of the of the museum uh, with uh, with uh, exterior access, so that would lead to to this uh, 
grand uh, uh, subway plaza, which would link uh, all the wings uh, of the museum. Um, another project uh, was using this uh, uh, particular module that was inspired by the by the by by another facility existing facility that was maintained actually by all the all the projects all the students uh, so they went on with this uh, very regular model to uh, to replicate and create uh, new new spaces even in the in the landscape uh, design Okay, um, as I was saying, we, we went uh, on um, to the detail scale, which was uh, up to one to 20. And um, every student um, picked an area of uh, interest for its project and um, something that was special for their solution. And uh, here are some glances of, uh, of some of uh, the details that were made. And I think uh, this is it, I won't be that long. Thank you. Thank you, I hope you, I hope you could hear me. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dragos. Uh, it was a very um, complex and interesting project. I uh, I was glad to remember yeah. uh, this project and the it students also <laughs> very hardworking students. Mm -hmm. And uh, now uh, I shall ask Vlad to continue to present our uh, studio work. Hello, everybody. Uh, îl salut cu această ocazie pe domnul profesor Drugian, pe doamna profesoare Kirvai. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and uh, as we are uh, without uh, Panayotis now, I thought we should continue in Romanian, but it would not give some continuity to our presentation. So I will keep also in my uh, approximately English. And I will start presenting uh, another very interesting approach. As Dragos presented the rehabilitation and uh, uh, the big project, as we call it, uh, now uh, I present you the short project, which uh, the, um, it's at the start of, of, of the semester. And we choose kind of uh, connected projects, but with different scales in order to warm up the students for the longest project. So this is the shortest project there. We were still in uh, pandemic times, as you can see, but we were very glad to come together after a, a, a long time and to discover this site as we are speaking on a water tower, a water deposit, if you would like to say like this, located in uh, Drumutabere neighbor neighborhood in the sixth district. And it was also a project uh, where we implied also the authorities by presenting it and uh, making uh, an, an, an exhibition. And they were absolutely impressed and wanted to continue the experience with our students. But until then, we have a special method of getting new ideas for uh, interesting projects. As we were thinking with uh, Magda and Dragos and Alex, what should we do for the new short project? And uh, we discovered uh, and we remembered this site because it's a discrete site in Bucharest, but very present in the uh, spirit of the community of Drumutabere. As I uh, am, uh, born in Drumutabere and raised in Drumutabere, when I was young, when I was a child, when I was young, when I was also a student, I walked by this tower and I always asked myself, whoa, 
this should be uh, maybe this should be part of, of, of an ancient castle. But when I grew up, I, I discovered that it was just a technical installation uh, belonging to the army. And now an isolated, very interesting and um, how should I say, uh, like something which keeps a secret, very, I don't know, introvert. And we thought that it would be a nice and interesting project for the students to imagine a new use for this object, which just exists, but it does not have a real life for the community. And this became very quick, quickly a conversion project um, where we uh, gained some sustainability ideas and proposals. It became a project for the community, as you will see. And it became a project where the students uh, should make uh, their own scenario on what they should be doing. So we didn't give them a specific theme and path to follow, but we brought them there and asked to come with a scenario for uh, the present or a new life for this object. So the, the approaches were so different as they uh, imagined some a hub for the community where the uh, nephews and the grandparents and the young people should gather and stay together and know each other and meet each other, which is a very uh, good point uh, because Drumutabere it's a neighborhood where people know each other normally. They see each other at the marketplace. They say hello to the neighbor. So it's, it's, it's a special life there. And this kind of life where people know each other and respect each other should be, of course, increased in quality uh, in, uh, in our cities. So one kind of proposals integrated this rehabilitation and conversion into a community hub, as we can see here. Also, one project was about memory, about what Drumutabere has been, how it was its development, and uh, what can be for the people of tomorrow. So it's a memory tower. Uh, and this is another kind of approach where by uh, minimal interventions, but special and specific interventions, the tower come into nowadays to make part of the everyday life. So, so this was kind of discrete intervention, but giving a new life to this very special object uh, and strange, why not, object. Here we can see the storytelling also by exhibitions and by putting together a memory of the neighborhood and the stages of development of and and uh, and of transformations the people who come now into the neighborhood can come here and to uh, get into the stories and into uh, the neighborhood life and maybe they can have uh, a better approach into integrating themselves why not in the new family of the neighborhood so th this tower can be now like a medium uh, which um, provide new new ways of uh, getting there and getting together. Why not? Another very interesting approach was an educational uh, point. Uh, we gave the students a completely free way of imagining and inter of of the imagining uh, the types and the scales of intervention from extremely discrete ones to one that uh, uh, reaffirm the function and why not, which could transform this object into a new uh, visual, why not, uh, landmark and a functional new landmark by getting new structures, interesting structures, reversible structures, temporary structures, why not? So this is uh, an idea which 
uh, by playing together, by, by uh, discovering how to, to be together by uh, play, we can discover a new identity of this tower. Of course, um, new ideas emerged as uh, we are in the neighborhood where the cinema, it's very well known, the favorite cinema. When I was a child, I was uh, going there to see Superman, Spider-Man, and also uh, Sandokan. Why not? <laughs> when I had uh, five or, or, or six years. And this is a solution where this kind of uh, uh, putting a new way of, of, of cinema and of visual, uh, visual uh, frames could get this connection by um, putting a new way of viewing images and of discovering images through a new way of cinema. So this is also a very interesting idea that we embraced. Another type of projects were, of course, the projects which integrated some vertical gardens. And the idea was that, um, I don't know, I, 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 I wouldn't say each people of the neighborhood, by, but families or grandsons with, with their uh, grandfathers come here and take care of a plant. Why not? And you can give it a name and you can choose uh, what type of plant and you come here and you can see its development and you can put some water you you can do some watering you can you can clean it why not becoming a vertical garden for the community so this we integrated some uh, new concepts of uh, sustainability but also integrated this object into the community by this green meaning so i think this fusion of ideas and concepts is just absolutely great when, when, when trying to figure what can, can object can become. Here it's another takeoff of the same project with sections, plants, and how this uh, vertical garden should develop by using the rainwater and some kind of, of, of course, natural way of integrating it. This was a very interesting project. We have a student which keeps some birds at her home. And when we were uh, by uh, computer uh, uh, study, by, by, by Zoom uh, presentations, you always can hear uh, her birds singing. So it was not um, a new, well, uh, thing that she come with the idea that she should make here an urban cage for, for birds, uh, imagining how these birds could come together and, and become a family and sounds of, of these birds can, can, can be heard as an uh, acoustic landmark of this site. Why not? And people can come together and can visit the exterior, as you can see on, a, on an outer uh, stair then why not this should be kind of new sound landmark constructed uh, landmark we, we we embrace also the, this idea and I, I find it very interesting why not being a water tower of course we had some solutions where the water uh, became also present by uh, reinterpretation here we have an aquarium with fish and you can see the fishes and maybe you can uh, look for Nemo or you can uh, do, I don't know what, by uh, raising your own fish here, why not? And so the, the, the memory of water, it's also a philosophical concept. And this project preserved the presence of water by giving it a new life and a, a new, a new uh, I say, function also um, with a reflection in the life of the community. This is, um, I should say, bold project, also based on the memory of, on the presence of water as was the main uh, function of this tower by getting a panoramic view and also a waterfall, 
um, as maybe we can find in Singapore or I don't know in uh, special places and, and, and we say, wow, I should go there. But here we could have our own waterfall and gaining access to, to, to give, give a new life to, to this concept by the water tower, but also with a very, as we say, Instagrammable place because people are now uh, driven by this uh, new way of communicating into social media. Uh, people should come here and make a nice photo and make a nice selfie and put it on the Instagram and uh, giving a new life, a virtual life uh, for this place. And, and, and uh, this is a way of, uh, I don't know how to say, of uh, announcing that here something special is happening and this could provide an opening to other public uh, from the uh, other neighborhoods to come here. And like this, we could make contact with people from different neighborhoods and this could become a new platform of socializ socialization. So I find this very interesting. Of course, I don't discuss here the architectural solution but I discuss the quality of the idea and uh, I find this, this possibility very interesting as put in this project. A gravity tower, it's uh, also about water, also about drops and how the water can convert itself into water drops which fall and why not would go up as, as, as steam. And here our student, uh, think about people becoming the new drops as people can go up, can transform by this experience and then go down on the other side of, of the new structural tower. So uh, gaining a way of transformation, of inner transformation. So people become the water drops and uh, why not the memory uh, become probably the uh, thing which is more important than what is visible. You come here, you transform yourself by having a new experience and you go from here and you are transformed. So I think this is very interesting as a transformation medium uh, as gravity transforms all matter. So as you can see, this is the, the, the final slide. As you can see, uh, we um, experienced variable and valuable solutions, different solutions, different approaches, uh, experiencing this very creative way of uh, becoming a good architect because creativity should be uh, well encouraged. And of course, with attention to the details and not to to go, I don't know, uh, uh, crazy. Uh, we tried to give our students the occasion to become enthusiasts and to uh, give each of them the, the occasion, the opportunity to uh, give a personal part. And this is how students became, uh, can gather some emotional attachment to the projects and projects become more valuable by this emotional, also emotional um, dimension. So I think I have uh, presented enough of, of, of this uh, approach. And I hope, well, M Magda, it's on you. Thank you, Vlad. And uh, thank you all uh, the speakers today. And now I, uh, I shall invite uh, our uh, public if uh, they want to say something. It will be very nice. I have to yeah. mention that we are in the perfect timing because I finished exactly at half past six <laughs> as in program. Exactly. I put this time because uh, uh, very soon uh, it's an uh, opening at the university. It's an, uh, a new exhibition mm -hmm. is the, the opening for this. 
but uh, also we want to listen the opinions if you of have course. something to say or to ask uh, some comments we will be glad to to share i can say a few words uh, yes, I, I was absolutely hooked to the entire presentation and uh, I'm so surprised in a very, very good way, the way everything uh, come together as one, actually, even though uh, you were talking about uh, different activities, uh, the common ideas were, uh, were always there, uh, starting with uh, uh, the um, speech about dance and sensorial experiences uh, from Mr. Panayotis. And now the last ideas that we you've talked about, the ones about the presence of the of the memory of the absent, everything um, for me at least was very special, and uh, I've I've been taking notes all the time. So, thank you for this uh, presentation. Maria, uh, you could uh, complete uh, some ideas from uh, your experience in. Uh, um... Uh, masters or uh, what uh, you have uh, the recent experience uh, I, yes. I know you participate at uh, some workshops or something I yes yes I'm, I'm I would be I would be glad to uh, I participated in um, a master class in Bologna uh, where I've uh, had the great chance to work with uh, very renowned architects and to meet them and just to to, to be there together with them and discuss uh, ideas and uh, interact with uh, other students. Um, and I'm more than willing to uh, present to the students and to share with them. And uh, I'm very glad to, to see the fact that they are really enthusiastic and motivated and they too want to participate to competitions and to win scholarships. And uh, I've also uh, maybe uh, I could do uh, a sort of presentation about uh, my experience uh, at Irish Mateusz, where I've been uh, selected uh, to work uh, starting this summer. So I think that uh, maybe I, I could uh, come and share from these experiences as, as well. But thank you again. It was really, really captivating. Of course, uh, you can, Maria, anytime. <laughs> we shall invite you. Uh, at the next uh, session. <laughs> yes, it will be okay. another. So, probably someone else want to. Thank you very much. Very interesting for me. Bravo for you. Uh, congratulations. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dana Kirvai. So. Well, I think I can stop the recording now. Yes. I declare the Olympic Games closed. <laughs> closed, yes. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Thank you for sharing very interesting uh, experiences. And I'm sure that this is just the beginning of a beautiful friendship and uh, yes. new ways of communicating <laughs> experiences because I'm sure there are many of us eager to present and to, and to, and, and to share extremely valuable uh, experience, but also mostly for the students. So I hope next time we, we, we maybe we should um, uh, be aware and to, to come together in a, in a bigger context. Thank you very much also for Thank the invitation. You. <laughs> Thank you and see you soon.